Welcome to Mershman Seed's Cup of Joe. On this episode, Avery Bennett joins us for a Western Illinois and Southeast Iowa update. When do you need to decide if you will have to replant? Iowa State's corn rootworm monitoring is about to start. When should you apply fungicide and at what stage? Here's Ben's input. Welcome to this week's episode of Mershman Seed's Cup of Joe. Today we have Turk, myself, and we have Avery back on this week. Avery, you've been doing some scouting out in the fields, looking at wheat, looking at corn, soybeans, a few replants. What's going on? Yeah, it's been a busy uh, last 10 days, honestly, out there on the fields um, here in southeast Iowa and western Illinois. Um, I'd say from the 10th to the 17th, we've been able to see farmers just get in the fields and run really hard um, from morning to night um, all day long. And you know, which is a very good thing. And I think we've had pretty good adequate uh, soil conditions. The soil's working relatively well. Planters are rolling. Um, and you know, what we're seeing is when the seeds are going in the ground, uh, just the temperature, um, soil temperature and everything, those seeds, it's pretty amazing to see them get put in the ground. and. Two, week, two days later, we're seeing a half inch uh, radical on those uh, soybeans and corn plants. Um, and the stuff we're seeing, you know, that was planted the 10th, of, of course now we're seeing it pop up. And I'd say even the stuff we're seeing that was planted the 15th, 16th um, is up out of the ground. A lot of guys that I've talked to this past week are talking, they've never seen corn come out of the ground in four days. They've never seen beans come out of the ground in four days. Everything, everything on the way down was up and you could roll it. The, this morning when I came in. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and definitely, I mean, I take the drive from Il Illinois across the river here to West Point every day, and it's amazing to see the difference between the corn and soybean crop that was planted over there in Illinois, which would probably had that, I'd say, a little earlier. I mean, they probably had a week ahead before the crops I drove past over there in Davis County. Um, it's amazing to see the, the difference on a afternoon drive or an all-day drive. Yep. We put our plots in, what, Friday, and it's all up. Both corn and soybeans are up, and you can row it just fine. Yep, our, our plots were in that four to five days where they are flying out of the ground, so that's, that's very positive. Um, talk about a little bit about the replant, I guess. You've seen just a few bags of replant go out in a yeah. little bit of your northern territory. I guess in my territory up in the northern, and we had a, another ASM up probably by Pella. Um, they've had a few replant issues and the you know common cause of that is that crusting. Uh, just probably got in a little early and when that rain came down it just, and that heat came, it just sealed everything up and the uh, soybeans just couldn't make it through and they're just snapping off. And so we've sent a, a couple bags of seed, a handful of bags of seed here and there uh, to add, you know get those farmers to fill up those areas that were light or you know empty and so I mean, I think the stuff that the farmers got in last week, we're not going to see any issues on replant, but I guess the farmers that were able to get in a little earlier, or maybe too early, uh, they're having that common cause is crusting. Uh, what's, what's the dates that we've identified so far we've seen some issues? I think it's the 28th and 29th of April Yeah, yeah. is where we're really seeing that, uh, that, that, that where that crusting is definitely, yeah. um, we're fighting just a little bit, and it's not a huge problem at all. So that kind of brings us to the, the the replant decisions and and when do we pull the trigger on when our area sales managers advise what when replant needs to happen. And Joe has always talked about his uh, soybean plants will bush out 18 inches in all directions. Well, if you put 18 inches in between each soybean plant on a 15 inch row, you're getting down into the you know teens and 20,000 plants breaker, and that's probably not completely where we want to be, but when I'm looking out at a soybean field in 15 inch rows, I'm looking for foot skips. So I, you can very easily get very high yield potential when you're looking at a 60, 70,000 stand, as long as it's evenly spaced. And Joe, we, you know, we always talk about the, the weed control that happens after that. But if, if any farmers are out there that are planting Mershman seeds, or even if some of the ones that are listening that aren't, uh, we have Mershman seeds replant manuals that have a handful of stuff back from the 80s all the way to current stuff coming out of Purdue, University of Minnesota, or University of Missouri, Iowa State. And it does a real nice job laying out what the yield potentials are versus the later planting versus keeping the stands that you have. And uh, I'm, I'm really comfortable with 60, 70, 80,000 stands mm -hmm. because you can get like 75% of total yield on how many pounds do they plant down in, on their increases? Uh, uh, six to seven pounds. Six to seven pound. 
and that would probably equate to uh, in the teens, mm -hmm. you know, 15, 16, 17,000 plants per acre. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, soybeans have the, an amazing ability to branch and bush, and I think a lot of our varieties are in that 2 to 2.5, even some threes on bushing capability, so we're not running the thin inline beans that need the, the population that some of the older, the grandfather's beans did. So replant decision. Hopefully we don't have any more of it. Hopefully all of our customers that have the stuff in the ground, the good majority of the stuff that was planted. And we'll be getting week. a few showers coming through, not, nothing heavy, and, mm -hmm. and that's just enough to soften up that crust and, and they're popping right through. Yeah, that helps on the four days. I honestly think we are sitting pretty good. And you know, like I said earlier, maybe we are pushed back 10 to two weeks um, in our normal planting dates, but what we've had a good run here in the last two week or week 10 days yep so. and when you think about corn too in that aspect you know you might have gained some advantage on getting that corn out of the ground as fast as you did even though we're a little bit later emerged we planted into the right conditions with the right um, moisture and heat that all that corn coming out of the ground is a huge win for yield potential as well most of most corn belt is really getting in in pretty good shape the North Dakota and Minnesota are the two that are really lagging behind in our and we'll probably continue to lag behind a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so the mother nature has not been kind to those guys, but it looks like they're drying out from what I was watching on Snodgrass's uh, YouTube channel mm -hmm. this morning. So it looks like they're gonna be still a little bit chillier, but they're gonna have, you know, 14 days of uh, drier weather for our- More normal weather, more normal temperatures. Yep. Yep, rolling in. We do have a little bit of a frost advisory coming in for some of our uh, Nebraska customers coming in on Sunday. So we'll be paying attention to that and seeing how the soybeans get through frost potential for Western Nebraska. Yeah. It's been an interesting year so far at least. They all are. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So what are we seeing on wheat? You and I spent some time looking at wheat crop again. Yeah, I don't want to jinx us here, but I mean, all our wheat from Missouri here to Southeast Iowa to Illinois, I mean, we're not seeing any disease pressure, you know, knock on wood. But um, we are seeing that we're at that FIX 5.1, 5.2 stage. Um, so we have advised some of our co-ops and our farmers here to get the fungicide on um, to pre protect from head scab and stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, Ben, you want to hit on that? You know, what are what are we using and what are we recommending, or how are we ensuring adequate cover on the head? And you know, how do we guarantee that higher quality? Uh, cropping. Yeah, so that heading application, as we've talked about before, is there to protect test weight and keeping head scab off. Uh, I like a product from Syngenta called Moravis Ace. Uh, BASF has a pro uh, product called Brasaro. Uh, two different modes of actions, but they control products uh, similarly. They have a little bit uh, Prasar has a little bit tighter window. Uh, Moravis has a little bit. Moravis has a little bit uh, bigger window. So it's a five-day window compared to like a three-day window for application because that timing of that 10.5.1 is a pretty tight window that you got to hit on wheat. Um, but there's other products out there like uh, Combra, Tebuzol. But ma the main thing, all of the the heavy hitters uh, that you're looking at have a triazole and an SDHI. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you don't necessarily need the strobilurin because the strobilurin will mess with uh, uh, your vomitox ratings. So triazole and SDHI are the two classes of fungicide that you're looking for with the, with the head application. Yeah, and we've been pretty fortunate on the disease uh, pressure. We haven't seen any yet. And then also on the insect pressure, we are very fortunate right now in this area and we haven't been really fighting any of that yeah. so far. Uh, do you recommend you know, when you're putting that fungicide on, putting an insecticide as well, or? Usually. Yep. Yep, usually we'll run an insecticide anytime that you're making the same pass with a fungicide, you're gonna throw an insecticide in. Is there a common one for this area? Oh, uh, Warrior, generic Warrior are, are pretty common insecticides when you're running it in. You can get those from bought for a buck and a half, two and a half bucks an acre. So pretty affordable. Yep, so when you're looking at, you're talking about insecticide, that brings us into the next role from Iowa State is saying that, the beginning of next week, May 23rd, is our uh, growing degree unit difference between uh, when we f 
saw our first uh, significant moth, moth flights to where we believe that those moths will be at the fourth instar. And when, when I say instar, that is just a measurement on how big the larvae of that moth get to where they can clip, uh, where they can clip the, uh, the corn plant and, and cause significant injury. So according to the growing degree accumulation and the predictions, we are at beginning of next week that we need to start scouting for, for cutworm. And this stuff's pretty little and, and it won't take very much feeding to do a lot of damage at this stage yep. uh, for these little plants. So the, the good news is um, most everything that we're selling uh, that has the Viptera trade in is, has built-in protection. Yep, the Viptera has two modes of action against the Lepidoptera species, which the cutworms fall into that that species, and uh, it actually creates a protein inside the the larvae's gut, and it'll kill the cutworm before they can chew off too many plants. Yeah, there's a lot of farmers that have kind of switched over to straight Roundup or conventional, yep. and so those those acres are going to have to be monitored very closely here coming up because the t the windows. Uh, pretty tight to be able to get, get that spray on there. Right, and with cutworm, correct me if I'm wrong, Turk, but when corn is at V1, V2, we don't really have a tendency to worry as much about it as if the corn is at V5, bordering on V6. They're gonna eat the same amount of food every day. You know, the bigger the plant is, the more it can tolerate, but they'll, they'll chew it off right at the ground or circle it basically right at the ground level and, and then it'll fall over but uh, they're mainly leaf feeding because the growing point's below the ground early on. Correct, so there's not as much of a injury per se, but it's something that you definitely wanna be scouting for right. and keeping an eye on as that corn plant gets bigger to where the growing point is getting closer towards the ground. That's yep. something that you really wanna be watching yep. for. Yep. Because our growing degree accumulation because of our week of 90 degree temperatures is on track, but our planting isn't necessarily on track where they would start clipping V5, V6 corn. So it's just something that we're gonna to wanna to monitor once once we get closer to that, that time point. So cutworms. And there are significant flights here in Southeast Iowa, Washington County had significant flights uh, coming in on the 24th through the 29th of April. So that's where they're getting their growing degree units talking about when they're gonna reach that point. And before we started filming, you and I were talking about you know, why Washington County, why some of these other counties, and I gotta, you know, we have a sneaking suspicion that it's due to the amount of cover crops that are used in certain counties and the adoption rate of those cover crops because those moths have a tendency to land in green areas. Green fields. Because that's where their, their offspring will have the highest likelihood to succeed. So cover crop areas are an area that I'd be scouting first as well. So we got another one on here too. Uh, Iowa State has the uh, corn rootworm uh, monitoring program is starting. So if you wanted to get signed up for that, if you have corn on corn with the corn on corn pressure that we've had in the past, uh, you can get signed up for that in a short period of time. Avery and I are going to sign up for that and we'll let you know what we're seeing on yep. our corn on corn fields. <clears throat> it's going to be a fun summer. It Digging is. up roots, looking at traps. Down south, we're hearing about stink bugs. The infestation is still there. Yep. Um, and, and if they're still around, they can ca still cause damage to these new crops yes. as they come out. So that's going to be something to keep monitoring as well. Yep. And stink bugs are pretty hard to control as well. You know, some of the different classes of insecticide don't work as well as others because we have agronomists down in that area that, that ha know which insecticides are working better on mm -hmm. their stink bugs for the problems yeah. that they had. They'll cause uh, modeling in corn and soybeans early on, but it's definitely something we're going to watch really closely as pod fill happens, especially on our seed fields. And the brown stink bug seems to be the, the, the biggest culprit down there. The brown marmorated yeah. stink bug. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. we, we, we do definitely fight that year in, year out. I think we're more of the green stink bugs up here. You want to walk us through, I guess, walk us through Avery on um, what you're looking at on corn and soybeans when you're when you're scouting, when you're doing plant stand analysis, oh, when yeah. you've done some of your flags testing. Oh yeah, so 
Last week, we were lucky to get in a field, a farmer asked, you know, hey, what is my emergence going to be like here in these growing degree days and this heat? And it was pretty amazing to see. And so we were trying to see how uniform uh, the corn was coming up. And so we did a flag test and it was pretty amazing to see. I think, um, I forget what the population he was shooting for there, but on like day one, we were seeing that 13 uh, corn plants emergence was relatively low and we weren't too concerned of that. But then we saw a spike after that next day and then we went to 73 the next day and then 39. And so from a couple of articles and looking at, um, we also, you know, the common saying is you want them coming up within 24 hours of each other. But I have read a few things here and there is as long as they come up within two days, I think we're sitting pretty good. So those plants that came up um, or that first day, you know, they're not gonna be a weed or a noxious um, a yield competitor. Uh, so I'd say that farmer's sitting pretty good. So um, we advise that farmer, you know, I think your stand is adequate. I think your, your emergence is good. Um, same with the soybeans. Um, we're seeing that, you know, they did have a, in that field next uh, nearby, they were a no-till. And so they had a little harder time coming up. Um, I wouldn't say crusting, but, you could just see it. They just took a little bit more time to get out of the ground. Um, but I mean, so that's what we kind of are looking for there, um, emergence and going from there. Yep, and then when, when we're doing that, we dig up plants. That, I think that, that, was, a four, that was a four row uh, average. So yep. what you're talking about when you were looking at that. 17, so, uh, sorry, 17 and a half foot by four rows. Yep. Counting each time. Yep, so when we're looking at that, we, we go and look at, okay, so the late ones that, that you can kind of compare outside of your test, uh, were they planted too deep, were they planted too shallow, were they planted, uh, were they off the side of the row, what adjustments can be made and notes are being made during that yep. time frame to try and uh, improve the planner for what's, what's coming next. And I think that's what we saw on those 13 that came up that first day as, you know, we did see a little bouncing around on, uh, depth of plant, uh, seed and I think those 13 we when we dug them up we did see them be a little shallower than the uh, that the second day and that third day and so we did make a few adjustments for when he was going into the next uh, next field because he was planting for you know seven days and so we were able to see the emergence and adjust here in those later fields that he was planting yep all things be paying attention mm -hmm. because you can make hundred dollar yield swings or hundred dollar per acre changes very quickly. The main thing is, is keep your notes if you're not if you're if you're done planning keep your notes make sure that you're addressing those before the next season on your planner. Correct. So yeah yeah all of that's very important. And I mean just hitting on some of our products you know we have that new um, MX 709 corn Stein corn you know and I looked at a field two days ago and it was it was pretty good I mean so I think we got to be happy with that new evolution that Stein's bringing to the table, and you know, then our soybean, our seed treatment. I mean, it's the Cadillac of all seed treatments, I think, and stuff. Soybean that we're putting early, like I said, that April, um, that didn't get hit with that crusting. It's amazing to see how well those things came up and how protective, and just the vigor and growth between our Austins to our Kennedys to our McKinleys. What I'm seeing so far. I'm pretty happy. Well, our, our seed treatment's hanging in there and keeping that, giving that plant uh, some extra, uh, an extra chance before it starts uh, um, giving up. And so that's what we're hearing from our sales managers everywhere is that, uh, you know, our stuff is hanging in there and the seeds remain viable, viable uh, until we can get that rain or whatever to get it pushed up. Otherwise, uh, some of the others are just giving up and, and dying and it has to be replanted. Some yeah. of the other competitors' products, so and we're pretty proud of it. As we're scouting, you know, one of our goals is that we are making making a few changes into our seed treatment with maybe a new um, nemicide and stuff like that. And so we're going to be looking at um, some of the different seed treatments from our standard to our uh, Sultro Bonus Coat Plus to our... Um, what we are thinking of making here in the 2023 season. Yeah. And so just looking at our seed treatment, making sure that we are making the right move for the farmer. You know, farmers mm -hmm. are first and we want to provide yeah. a really good seed treatment for just a pretty much a break even cost. And so, I mean, where I'm excited for this year, it's about to learn a lot. No, yeah. that is fun. So what else we got, Turk? Oh, the, the markets have 
kind of went back to being crazy again, up and down, you know, from day to day, and depending on what the news is. Um, in India, made an announcement that they weren't going to uh, export any wheat, and then the, mar the wheat market went crazy, went limit up a couple days, and then then they said, well, maybe we're, we'd reconsider, and the markets reacted the other way. And so it, wheat's in that crazy mode, but we're getting to that time of year where wheat's starting to get kind of honed in and narrowed down the, the wheat. Uh, they did the um, crop tour in Kansas, and they come up with very close to what the government is projecting. Uh, and so uh, the, the numbers, I think, are pretty, pretty set. What we're, what we're here and what we're seeing is there or is pretty real and we'll know here very shortly because you know, combines will be rolling in what, uh, three weeks to a, a month and uh, there won't be a lot of changes between now and then, I don't think, in the crop size uh, or, in, or the, and it depends on how much rain they get. Late rains could help Kansas yet and, and I think they've got just a little bit, but uh, you know, we, we're still in, we're still in a, a weather market for that western, um, uh, corn belt and wheat belt and wheat growing areas it's dry and remains dry and and I don't think anybody's got surplus of anything anywhere a lot of 30 30 bushel wheat covers a lot of what that wheat tours yep. saying I was yep. reading about last yep. night yep I think um, 39.7 is where they came in which is last year was 58 which was still below normal and so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens uh, Again, the uh, on corn and soybean side, again, soy, soybeans kind of was the leader this year, this week in in the markets and kind of held steady. And corn kind of took a step back, and again because of of the of the planting progress that was made, some people thought it would, might be more than it was, but it was still um, a, a high number. And I think next no, next week's number will be. Uh, even better, we will. I think we'll gain ground on getting caught up, uh, yeah. for sure, on our planting progress and and uh, everything. The focus will be switched over to soybeans and getting that, getting them done. And I think they're doing very well as well. I think we're at that time of year where it's going to become a uh, uh, go to switch into a weather market and demand. What is the demand market and uh, and that'll move us right on into the to uh, mid-June which is typically when markets peak for the year or depending on the weather yep there's gonna be some serious money made on the double cropping stuff I think I think that's a huge opportunity for a lot of folks yeah it'll be exciting to see how much business maybe we gain or how much interest we gain wheat gains here in this next growing season we got a lot of wheat grown this year, so hopefully we'll be able to help a lot of people out with that double crop. And if, we're, and if our wheat continues to look as good as it does right now, um, we'll have decent supplies, won't we, Ben? Yep. Our ultra earlies look pretty good. Yep. Well, we'll talk more about those those double crop opportunities once we get closer to uh, harvest soybean harvest time. But until then, uh, Turk did I from what I what I gathered, Joe did a little bit of homework for you so that we wouldn't miss out on the corny joke because apparently he didn't like Lynn's corny joke when Lynn had to come up with his own. I mean, I mean, let me find him here. I, he sent them to me. The two that um, that uh, I've selected that out of the ones he sent me was um, uh, the first one, um, Avery. Uh, uh, what has uh, what has no fingers but many rings? No fingers but many rings. A uh, tree. Oh, that's yeah. Pretty, that's pretty common right there. Yeah, there you go. Ben, mm -hmm. this one's for you. How do you warm up a room after it's been painted? No idea. You give it a second coat. <laughs> that one's better than the first. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Nice work. So uh, I guess we'll close out this week's segment and uh, thank everybody for watching. You can tune in and catch us on podcasts if, uh, if that's where you'd like to listen to us or on YouTube. On our YouTube channel, you can like, subscribe to that. I hope everybody is making good progress with their planting this week and is safe in doing so. Um, we will catch you next week. Thank you for your business and thanks for watching.